Hello people of the internet, it's Amanda and unless you've been living under the rock for the past couple of weeks then you've probably heard of the K-drama The World of the Married or The World of a Married Couple. Now this drama wrapped up over the weekend on a different level of high mainly because it's now South Korea's highest rated K-drama in cable history. Being well received overseas with Filipino fans as well as Indonesian fans just overly passionate about the plot of this particular drama. I have to admit that I'm just one of those people got swept under the hype of this entire thing mainly because I've been seeing people that I know keep posting and posting and posting about this every single episode so I got curious being the Asian drama geek that I am and I just happened to find myself watching the first episode of this back around when episode 9 or 10 was already airing and then from there after I caught up I just happened to like watch it episode per episode every week before I start to get into that I am no expert I just have to put it out there I'm just a fellow viewer who's just really into these types of things so this is definitely my perspective on why I feel like dramas work or do not work it's the thing that I do here on my channel so I'm definitely no critic whatsoever I just want to put this out there for fellow fans like me who also share similar sentiments with that said so here it is my reasons as to why I felt like the world of the married or the world of a married couple worked for audiences for one the narrative the narrative of cheating and adultery is something that is definitely cliche i have to give you that when i was reading all about this before i got to watch it that was my first impression I think that's so easy to f up mainly because one it's such a cliche to the point that you can only make a couple of things into the narrative to really deliver that type of message but then at the same time because it's something that's just so easy to make entertaining then it can be and it's an easy formula for success so th these types of topics I feel like are definitely double-edged swords and for the world of the Mary they sort of like they really made it work because of certain reasons that I will be explaining further. But for this one, I think number one really, what really captured the interest of viewers in the first place is this idea of something that we all want to be very voyeuristic about. And that is watching these characters react to something that is a topic that i think even in real life we would be very interested to just dabble into or just gossip about really tapped into the very human aspect of of just wanting to learn more about these controversial issues if you get what i mean Let's move on to my second point which is despite the fact that it's a cliche, it still knows how to make its audiences stay and want to watch more. I have to admit that when I watched the first episode, it didn't really impress me because halfway or not even like a quarter into the plot, I already had an inkling as to who the mistress was and lo and behold, I was right. It definitely tried its best to mislead the viewers and I'm not sure if I'm the only one or I'm one of the few who caught on early but the reveal in the end as to who the mistress was it wasn't much of a surprise to me but it definitely did have elements of surprise to it that would that you would want to like want to find out okay so even if I didn't really enjoy that much even if I didn't really get what other people are saying about the whole it's really surprising or whatever that type of thing it leaves you curious as to what happens next and so it builds up from there so you watch the next episode and it ends again on something like that without it being too tiring because sometimes when dramas do it you just end up you know expecting a cliffhanger every single episode which this one does as well but it it definitely gives you levels or degrees as to what would pique your curiosity. Look, it's not a constant buildup of every single episode. There's this, there's this, there's this. No. Sometimes it leaves you in a very emotional state, leaves you in a very curious state. Next, it leaves you in a very angry state. And because of these variations in terms of what it makes you feel at the end of the episode, that what, that's what makes you stay. 
doesn't necessarily have to be a very repetitive type of process and thus the reason why the progression of each episode is still like moving very smoothly at least from a viewer's perspective now jumping off from that i move on to number three which is the idea that again as i mentioned even if there are cliche elements to this it still didn't fail to explore a lot of topics or a lot of plot twists that are enough to incite excitement so again as i mentioned I'm not sure if it's just me as a viewer, but some of the scenes or some of the things that I've seen on here I felt like was initially predictable. At least in the first couple of episodes, say episodes 1 to 8, I guess. After that, it definitely shifted into something more that's a lot less easier to predict, which I loved. Because I, as I said, as much as I'm enjoying the entire thing while I was watching it, having to deal with like knowing what happens next even if you know you're still very excited about the plot it kind of sucks if you end the series and you never really had aha moments even just once in the entire plot and this one isn't i wasn't surprised in a lot of like choices that they went for for the plot itself but i definitely had moments where I found myself swept up in emotions because I didn't see some of the parts coming in or some of the characters acting a certain way or me just shouting at my screen saying that I expected better from you, at least in a good way. Um, and you know like all these things because again there's definitely a thin line between a plot being predictable but still entertaining and then at the same time a plot being predictable and like you just predict basically every single thing about it that it's not that exciting anymore. Now from those technical aspects of the plot treatment and everything, let's move on to number four, which is the acting. This drama is something that definitely incites a lot of emotions and it knows when to hold itself back and it knows when to let go. Now, if I were to elaborate on that, um, there are a lot of dramas that focus on these types of topics and they would want to make it as controversial, as convoluted as they can to the point that we really lost touch of what is happening in the first place. But here, the characters themselves felt human. You know, they were able to express guilt, they were able to express vulnerabilities and we see them make mistakes that we don't want them to see. These are not just actors playing characters, but these are like characters that we learn to care for because of the acting of the actors behind them. Now, jumping off from acting and again talking about the characters, let's move on to the character arcs or the plot of every single character that we encountered in this particular series. What I like about this is that in the end, you never really had a car character that you you hated so much or that you didn't root for because it the story reminds you over and over that these are people who fell into certain circumstances because of their choices and that's what made this plot really good. It's because characters are not just one-sided characters they are people who had emotions who have misgivings who also have their own stories which is kind of cool because initially in the first couple of episodes you have characters who you just want to hate completely and then by the end of it and i'm not sure if it's just me again but by the end of it you, you sort of like feel for these characters even if you knew that um, they really effed up most of the time in the particular narrative. Um, and it just felt very, it just felt very, again, it's, it felt very well-rounded and that's why the narrative worked. It's because these are people that you see on screen in real life and that's what made the narrative okay. There's no ultimate bad person in this entire thing it seemed like in the end we all saw victims in their own circumstances because of their own choices and that's what made it work is because we somehow know certain people who in our lives that have 
probably been in the same situation or has the same tendencies and again that type of relatability no matter how cliche it is it definitely taps into my number one point again which is it is something that people can see themselves in and people and it's not that foreign of an idea now for my last point which is number six I'm here to talk about the ending. Now, again, as I mentioned, I wouldn't spoil anything. At least that's a first when I try to like swear off things here on my channel. But here I'm really gonna try to not spoil anything. Um, I think for that ending, nobody saw it coming, I guess. I have my own predictions as to what, how it's gonna end and I'm glad that it, and it didn't really end the way that I predicted. I know that a lot of people also have their own notions as to how it's gonna be like. Um, I, I definitely had that moment in the ending when I thought that's how they're going to end it and I'm happy that they didn't feel like a cop out if they went that route. People who, who watch the series probably know the scene that I'm talking about but I like how it still transcended from expectations in the end um, as compared to when it started when as I mentioned earlier it these types of plots definitely have the tendency to be as predictable or as cliche as they are and while I didn't really while I personally don't mind it to go a cliche route given everything that has happened into the drama in the end it still exceeded my expectations as to how they wrap it up it may feel like anticlimactic to some people I don't know but to me it was a conclusion definitely it's not a it's it's not something that I saw coming, uh, but it definitely tied up the story really well. So tell um, me down in the comments below, are you planning to watch it? Have you seen it? What are your thoughts on it? Just talk it out down there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel and you would want to hear more from me, please hit subscribe. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope to see you again soon in a new one. Bye!